Good evening and welcome to this fifth session of the ACM Hangouts hosted by Arts Council Malta. This session concludes the first round of ACM Hangouts, which is Arts Council Malta's regular virtual platform for networking and knowledge sharing. These first five sessions focused on the beneficiaries of the investment in cultural organizations, and together we explored a range of different themes, all of them around the theme of sustainability. Um, and we met representatives from these organizations, and we also had the participation of a number of key speakers who joined us throughout these, uh, these sessions. The four previous sessions are all available on the Arts Council Malta's Facebook page, so if you are interested in um, watching them or going through them, they are all available there. So today we are focusing on exploring the digital and the alternative. We will be discussing audiences and focusing on alternative ways of creating content and engaging with audiences with a particular focus on the digital sphere, alternative spaces and new audiences. As you know, this is at the moment a very relevant, a very important topic which we shall explore together with our organizations as well as key speakers. And we um, definitely, definitely would very much like you to participate in this conversation, so feel free to send us um, texts on our Facebook page um, or else um, to, to uh, write on our chat on Zoom because the rest of the ICO beneficiaries um, have joined us through that platform. So today we have, we're going to have um, three different speakers and two key speakers who are going to be sharing their experience, their knowledge, and what they've been doing so far to engage audiences and program in particular and different ways. At the end of the session, then, reporter Stephanie Bonici will be giving us a quick roundup of what we discussed during the session. I would also like to remind you that the session is being recorded. I would now like to give the floor to Albert Marshall, who is the executive chair at Arts Council Malta, for his introduction. Albert. Thank you, Elaine. Um, invisible audience, welcome. <laughs> I'm so happy to be uh, the first speaker in a very important session, which this is. Arts Council Malta embraces 11 public uh, cultural organizations, and as such, uh, Arts Council needs to lead. And perhaps because of what we're going through, not what we have gone through, but we are going through, because we're still endangered species in relation to what's happening around us, uh, I would like to uh, uh, announce, if you like, a revision of Art Council Malta's remit. Our remit is from this uh, pandemic on is culture and the arts are not afraid. It's important that we revise our remit in such a way, uh, which of course includes the disbursement of a substantial amount of monies, which are public monies, uh, and the strategies and the way we conceive uh, the administration of how this money reaches the auto, our, our, our targets, which are our artists and cultural organizations, we need to uh, reinvent because of what is happening. And therefore, if we identify funds that are not uh, sensitive enough to what we're going through, then we courageously ensure that the money is channeled towards new ways of how to appeal to new audiences, how to make new audiences come to us, as well as we uh, striving to go to them. Uh, the key word, as Elaine uh, very wisely report, uh, reminded me before we started, is new is audiences. I, or I think more than audiences is new audiences as far as we're concerned. We are very happy with the audiences we have or we had because we're running through uh, a phase where we sometimes uh, 
have our doubts whether that audience still exists because audiences are still rather weary to come to us because of uh, the pandemic and therefore we have to make sure that we don't go haywire when it comes to uh, uh, observing rules and regulations related to ensuring that uh, there is no danger in coming to shows. But we have revised the uh, uh, rules and regulations that have been issued by the uh, health authorities because uh, we tried to negotiate new uh, re new regulations that are in the spirit of the old ones, but we thought that some uh, draconian elements in those rules should be revised, otherwise we would never open up our theatres again. And I think courageously we're going down that path. Uh, hopefully we come to a stage now that uh, Arts Council Malta are working on the next uh, uh, strategic uh, planning for uh, the next five years uh, so that we are more aware of the new world we live in. And therefore, it's very important for us to realize that when we speak in fora like this, we uh, make people aware that we have changed, that we are more aware of what needs to be changed. And therefore, we have to work in unison, uh, in a spirit of camaraderie, because we need each other very badly. Uh, Arts Council Malta is there not just for a reference point, but also to inspire, to be very, very uh, democratic in the way it embraces audiences and new audiences, as well as uh, revising how to uh, uh, do culture and practice the arts. We love our artists, we wish them well. We are aware of uh, some of them, especially the professional sector of the artistic community, having uh, suffered so much because of the lack of cultural space where to perform, where to uh, profess their profession. And therefore, we are uh, more than ever before aware how important uh, financial aid is at the moment for all people who uh, are so dear to us that profess the arts. Milan, one of the real worst hit uh, uh, cities in the world, have reinvented their theatre, for instance. <laughs> I was watching a, sh a show yesterday, a documentary rather than a show, uh, on Rai Cinque, and there was a beautiful, inspired moment where we saw snippets of how theatre in Milan is being performed. They are wearing masks, but they're going back to the roots of how theatre was born in Greece. And because the old theatre from Athens was born with wearing masks. <laughs> we are now wearing our masks too. But uh, our masks are recreated to be utilized so that we generate uh, involvement with audiences. Of course, we, like Milan, uh, uh, revise our uh, way of doing shows so that digitally, digitally, uh, using new technology, we uh, communicate to audiences, old and new, uh, and therefore we have to uh, be very, very creative in the way how to make our art uh, 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 nicely and comfortably riding on new platforms. This time around, digital. Thank you. Thank you, Albert. Certainly these words are very encouraging because it is a difficult time and it is a time to reinvent ourselves, to reinvent our practice and to go beyond what we know. It is an opportunity in a way to engage in, in a 
different way of doing um, our art. I know that artists sometimes resist this change or as maybe do not really um, look at digital platforms as you know, the ideal platforms to, to practice the art. Uh, we still need to defend the live element. But what, what's your take on that? I know it's been quite a, a debate um, locally and even internationally. Yes. Elaine, you know me. <laughs> I am a people's person and I can't resist not embracing people. The fact that I have spent three months talking to a bloody monitor <laughs> has been a big, huge sacrifice. It was fighting a culture, a personal culture, that I don't believe in. But it had to be done. It, it was the only way how to run our business uh, from home. Um, having said that, though, uh, it's important that, uh, like you say, we reinvent ourselves in such a way that we work in the spirit of being more conscious, more aware mm -hmm. of what can go wrong uh, when we have physical contact going on. Exactly, because now we know we have suffered kind of the, the having to stop everything, all our activities, so we are aware and we can uh, maybe take this into consideration. Yeah, but having said that, without sounding arrogant, the arts and culture are not afraid. Because once we start being afraid, uh, otherwise, as soon as we do that, we are atrophizing. We are uh, creating our own death. Mm -hmm. And that is no go, because arts and culture are, without sounding arrogant, I repeat that, not afraid of uh, uh, pandemics. <laughs> That's brilliant, Albert. And also, in terms of audiences, you you mentioned the non-existent audiences or maybe that it's becoming more and more difficult to appeal and engage audiences. So we did see a number of changes throughout the year, certainly. I mean, um, there maybe not a pandemic in our lifetime, but there were other um, disasters and difficulties along the way. So how can we tackle this? How can we keep our audiences with us? Look, uh, we, as Arts Council, I mean, uh, very modestly gave our share in the peak of uh, the pandemic and uh, turned to uh, uh, digitized press platforms so that we reach out to our audiences and new audiences. Um, we uh, uh, voted money for our producers and creatives to explore other ways and means of doing television, for instance. Mm -hmm. And we worked hand in hand with the uh, national broadcaster and made sure that when the national broadcaster didn't have anything to go to air with except uh, archives, we, we helped to create new material yeah. which was in itself uh, sometimes daring, sometimes new, innovative, and therefore we took the opportunity to generate uh, more creative ways and means of artistic expression. And this, of course, happened on television, but uh, I'm sure that artists uh, individually were thinking very seriously and creatively of helping out using uh, digital ways and means of communicating. And I think that's the way at the moment uh, to uh, proceed. And that's the way we, as dispersers of public money, need to channel uh, financial resources to ensure that this regeneration of material reaches out to uh, people, old audiences, and new. And new. That's very important. Though it was also an opportunity for us to discuss a little bit more, to stop and reflect. So, in a way, even though obviously it presented a number of difficulties, 
Arts Council was there um, offering financial assistance, support um, to the artists, whoever needed anything at all, um, guide, guidance or funds could kind of appeal to, to, to Arts Council support mechanisms. But it was also, there were also quite a number of platforms to discuss certain issues, such as this one. So um, I really think that on that level it did um, create a, a positive, a good, I don't really like the word, to use the word positive, a good thing in, in this case. After me, Marian, who is uh, the director responsible for uh, funds and strategy, will, I'm sure, enlarge on what you're talking about, because Marian's narrative is extremely important in this regard. That's good. Thank you, Albert. Thank you for being here um, with us and for this introduction. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, invisible audience. <laughs> and hopefully you are new audiences uh, to us without us knowing. Thanks, Albert. So each of these sessions featured a number of different organizations that are benefiting from the investment in cultural organizations. And today we are meeting representatives from Fondazione Temesamit, Electronic Music Malta and Blitz. Blitz and Fondazione Temesamit were also supported um, by the Valletta Cultural Agency. Here is a short video about the organizations. Electronic Music Malta testa tejt iġi taħt saqaf wijħet. L'artisti innovaturi jow diletta nti tal-muzika elettronika. U titratta il-muzika elettronika min ħafna ambiti muġ bis il-produzzjoni imma anka l-elementa legacy, l-element edukazzjonali kifu kwal l-elementa l-novazzjoni. Blitz is a contemporary art space in Valletta which was founded in 2013. It is housed within a repurposed typical Valletta townhouse. And since its founding, um, Blitz has worked continuously and constantly towards bringing um, international contemporary art scene to Malta, while simultaneously um, establishing a place for Malta and Maltese contemporary art in the international scene. FTZ Community Foundation is a Maltese NGO that supports and works with and collaborates with local artists as well as cultural operators. Its modus operandi, its objectives and ambitions is to work together with all the spheres of artistry whereby we can work on a national level as well as implementing European projects. Circus is a conference and festival in the first place to the Electronic Music Malta every day and weekend. Bissaha tal investment in cultural organizations grant in the Mill Malta Arts Council, Ahna Bek Nistau, Nihdu Flivel different than the festival in Amro. Thanks to the ICO in collaboration with the ACM and VCA, specifically because we are based here in Valletta at the Splendid, we know that we can achieve what we can achieve that in three years' time is over the course of this program we can consolidate and professionalize the system and setup we've developed in order to facilitate, cultivate, foster and help established artists, but most especially young upcoming artists. With the support of Arts Council Malta and Valletta Cultural Agency, together with various others, um, various other stakeholders and patrons, um, Blitz is able to continue to be pivotal to the development of the contemporary art scene in Malta. I would first of all like to welcome Ms. Marianne Kauki, who is the Director of Funding and Strategy at Arts Council Malta. Um, Marianne will be participating in our discussion later on. On to our first speaker, Marka Bourdain from Fondazioni Temesamit, who will be sharing the organization's perspective um, in terms of engaging audiences. Mark? So, hi Elaine, hi everyone at home. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Really happy and honored to be here. And I'll start off by saying that um, FTZ Community Foundation as an organization, it manages a lot of projects. Primarily, one of the projects we manage 
is the Splendid. A lot of artists are aware of what the Splendid is because for the past 10 years we've managed a lot of uh, projects starting from cabaret to opera to straight theatre as well as stand-up as well as the alternative so with, with including music and different kinds of um, interpretations of performance art. Uh, we are here however specifically to talk about the, the way forward for the Splendid and where the Splendid has for the best part of its uh, creation very much a uh, receiving house, so we always accepted people coming in. Um, through the foundation, we want to keep that uh, standing there as an independent, secular space, safe space for, audi for artists, especially audiences, where they feel they can tell the voice, but also start curating and creating a program that can start driving the narrative. And um, one of the first ways we would like to do this is by, um, most especially in talking in the discussion we were having today, is in the way we engage with audiences. Um, as a foundation, as well as, um, as a space, we've had a, quite a beautiful palette of the kind of people who come and visit us. So um, if many a time people think that art and culture is something that is reserved for the academic or for the high-brow uh, kind of person, we actively go against that because we've always been about developing works which work within the community. And one of the things we would like to do, uh, especially in these times, this was going to happen even pre-COVID, but especially with COVID, is invest specifically in what we what we've been hearing a lot throughout these hangouts, which is the cataloging process, the archiving nature, and especially the documentation side of things. However, the one element we will be pushing forward and we believe in is um, putting a stronger emphasis on outreach as well as education. Now, education, not just in a formal way of education, not in an education like educating an artist or educating a community, but also in an in informal sense. Because we believe if we foster and create works of art within the community, for the community, by the community, that is how we start to engage and develop and create a new audience. So how do we go about that? We do this by being very strategic with who and how we work with. So we twin up with councils, with the regions of Malta, as well as communities, and as well as PCOs. We believe in creating synergies and collaborative projects within nature, whereby we can walk in to um, any specific community, identify the artists within the community, identify the voice of the community, understanding what it is that the community wants, and would like to invest in and create and form work that goes um, uh, around, around that. Always using art and culture as our common currency, as the lingua franca. However, making sure that when we talk and when we produce these works with these different artists and, and, and organizations, we always understand the why of why we're doing it. Uh, many a times, I believe, as artists, we get lost in our own reasons, rather than understanding that we have to nurture and find a voice where we can engage with the community, engage with an audience, and that is the way um, we believe we can push that forward. So, one of the things um, we, we are truly looking at here, especially with the help of the, of, of, of the ICO, and which I believe is, very, is quite fundamental to us, is how do we reach out? How do we allow the people who are unaware of what it is that we do, especially as, uh, from an organization point of view, but even from a, from a space point of view, how do we reach out? And we strongly believe that one of the biggest helps we can achieve with this is in what I call it, in the investment of uh, a new media platform. Mm -hmm. The new media platform I talk about is, mm, it, we're not reinventing the wheel, but it's truly working within the parameters and the technological frameworks that, that exist around us today, but bringing them all together so that we can create a platform that can serve as a directory, as well as a community page, but a peer-reviewed community page, and as well as a broadcast platform so we can get all the artists that Malta has to offer under one roof. So, even in pre-COVID times, we've always invested in actively pursuing projects that foster capacity building from an audience perspective. 
justice perspective. And we do that by building projects that have strong strands within the community. So engaging with, with children, with youths, with, 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 general, with the general public, and especially even with, with, um, third age, with the third age community of such a space, to tell us their stories. The one thing um, everybody wants to do is tell the story. Everybody has a story to tell, everybody has a voice that they would like to, that they, they want to identify with. So that is how we actively engage with, by creating projects, exhibitions, operas, cabarets, theater pieces, that actually talk about where, where the audience, where the spectator, finds themselves within it. Creating a communion between audience, artist, and the community. And on that note, um, what is quite important is then how we actively engage with school children, with schools. Um, I mentioned again, working with regions, working a lot with councils, that is important because that is your first step into actively engaging within the colleges of the system. And that is how we can create and develop a new audience. Tapping into the creativity, the imagination, and, uh, and fantasy world of a six-year-old is much easier than it would ever be for, a, for an adult, mm -hmm. 20, 30, 40 plus. Mark, I'd actually like to ask you a question here. Um, so we mentioned this new media platform which you um, are using for this project, but um, how, how is that linked? How do you narrate a story um, in this particular case by using this, um, this particular media platform? So it is what we call at the very end becoming, so tapping into two things. So what I believe, what we call the creative entrepreneur, mm -hmm. tapping into um, working with, when, so when you talk with communities, when you're speaking with, specifically with communities, speaking with local businesses, speaking with especially young, te young, young savvy tech people, who um, I am not mm -hmm. one of those, but understanding and engaging with the 14, mm -hmm. 15, 16 year olds that know so much more than we do mm -hmm. when it comes to that kind of space. Because it did require a different kind of expertise here. So. Absolutely, but it's about finding the voice, allowing the voice of the youth yeah. to, to really tell us, uh, to, to use the tools um, that today's youths are working with, mm -hmm. especially in a post COVID world where everything is um, done online understanding the, the mechanisms and the truisms and, uh, uh, and the algorithms that make TikTok work for a particular project or maybe having to use Instagram for another kind mm -hmm. of project. So it's wanting to be able to, uh, to, to engage with the people who really know this. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times we think that to be artistic, um, we should not engage for some odd reason on these kind of digital platforms. But that is not true, because at the end of the day, all an artist wants to do is create work that gets uh, valued and valorized by having a receiving public. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. the same kind of thing as saying, if a, f if a tree falls in an empty forest, does it make a sound? So that's what it boils down to. So it's understanding, engaging, and working with um, the, 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 the age group, the, the group of people that can really understand this. And mm -hmm. that, to my mind, can only happen mm -hmm. through tackling youths and students. Yeah, and in a way it was a matter of updating um, the work to what's happening, um, to what was already happening even before COVID. So it kind of Absolutely. It, it accelerate, ex accelerated a little bit the process in a way. Uh, yes, uh, COVID is one of them situations that um, it's a once in a generation, not even generation, because, <laughs> well, you know, I think the last big thing that would have affected a generation could be considered to be the Second World War that had mm. such a global impact. So it's one of those opportunities, it's mm. one of those moments, um, opportunity is maybe a wrong word, but it's, it's a moment where we can really take the time to understand what's going on around us yes. and understanding how we tell and how we relate our message, which is, all about brand awareness, about narratives. You know, this is something that every major company, corporate company, for-profit company, engages and studies and understands. And it's about time that as um, cultural operators, cultural organizations, we start looking at the merit and the, and the non-merit maybe of such things. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about saying, okay, we've had, we've, uh, we have an archived project which we can just put on, mm -hmm. but it's now actively 
doing creating work, working with the, with, 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 with the professionals that are required in the field to make sure that whatever work you, can cre you create has a legacy. Because exactly. then that is it. From a theatre world, from theatre, from, from a performance piece, it's quite a finite thing. You do it once, or you run it, or you might have the opportunity to go to several festivals, but then outside of a documentation archived kind of presence, the, the project does not have longevity, does not have the legacy that, let's say, a film would, yeah. a song would. Yes. And that is what I believe we should be uh, tackling and addressing. And mm. that is what, as a foundation, through the Splendid, with all the work we do within, um, within councils, regions, PCOs, especially with our European networks, that's what we hope to achieve and, and build on. Excellent. Thanks, Mark. I would like to move on to our second speaker, who is Edwin Balsan from Electronic Music Malta. Um, Edwin will be tackling and the, the subject of um, moving away from comfort zones whilst looking at new and diverse audiences. Edwin? So, hello. Um, uh, actually, when we talk about COVID and the digital, Electronic Music Malta was actually formed digitally. So we have um, a healthy Pre -COVID. amount. Pre-COVID. Uh, five years ago. Five years ago. <laughs> we have a healthy amount of what they call keyboard warriors that when you meet them, they're real, real like uh, introvert people. But when they're <laughs> behind the keyboard, they suddenly become, you know, like explosive. And these were hammering out at how the electronic music artists weren't finding a place in the creative um, art community in Malta. And so basically this, this the digital Medium was, 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 I'd say, the spark that created electronic music Malta. Um, it's always been a bit in our heart, I'd say. Um, from the very first events that we created, we always um, sought the, the, the digital sphere as, as, as a very important place where we hold the, where we organize the events, where we also sometimes run surveys with our members. Um, one important aspect about electronic music Malta is that we have a a slightly different type of audience because we are like an artist collective that has the objective of of bringing together innovators, um, sound engineers, music producers um, in in alternative spaces in Malta. Basically, our objectives are a bit educational and on innovation. So, so we we, we used to use the digital sphere a lot to even recruit members in our organisation and other things. Well, basically, we have. In the last five years, we have engaged considerably um, our audiences in, in various alternative manners. Um, we've taken inspiration by going ourselves abroad and looking at what other music technology conferences are doing. And I can quote two in particular, which is Loop, which is um, organized by a, a software, a, a music production software company. Uh, and the other conference is Superboot, which is like a convention of all these electronic instruments that is, uh, both were held in Berlin. And we inspired ourselves to, to get ideas from these conferences. Um, we have basically engaged uh, alternatively in, uh, with our audiences in, and that's, uh, that circuits there, the, the, the annual conference that we do for which we got the ICO for. Basically, we have, we have engaged in various forms. Um, uh, we've... Uh, for example, we've um, featured alternative instruments such as electroacoustic um, devices that work using simple microphone pickups and uh, and other like bits and pieces uh, in a workshop that, that one finds in a workshop. There's Darren there playing the, his machine, and we've also engaged the audiences by by bringing forward um, musicians uh, and and engineers that were working from home and creating their own home-built synthesizer, which there, there's, there's the modular synth built by Mike Desira there on, on, the, on the right. Um, we've also um, featured uh, innovative installations, such as um, the bulb step sequencer built by Late Interactive, which consisted of um, uh, bulbs that, that, that can be triggered by, by those uh, lights with, with a string, and, and you create a note. And these, um, th the sequencer was featuring loops from Maltese electronic music artists. Um, we also brought, for example, a giant replica of the infamous TB303 acid rave machine, you know, there, um, which was built by a collective um, based in Edinburgh, one of whom is Daniele, who is an, a, a renowned electronic music producer. So we've, we've always tried to, throughout our first five years, to, to bring these, these um, features, but we said we need to change. 
we need to leave legacy behind. We need to come up with new projects that leave something behind. So far, we were organizing events, trying to stimulate the community. And then we set about um, growing organization from a mental perspective, from a people's perspective. And then we set out a, biz a good strategy for which then, thankfully, we, we got the ICO grant. And basically, also with the ICO, we are planning to embark on a digital platform, which we consider essential for us. So, so the digital, again, is very much into, into the core of our strategy. We need to engage new audiences. We are looking to engage more the children, the teenagers that, that are um, trying to choose what, what the, the way they start, they're going to enter the art industry. And obviously, we need to, uh, to, to start engaging um, future performers too. And, and this year, basically, um, we are uh, kicking off two, two projects. And I think Tina, Tina's present on Zoom. Um, uh, the first project is called Away from the Comfort Zone. And it's a great project in which we, we, we need to stimulate a bit the electronic music mm -hmm. producer community to go beyond electronic music and engage with other forms of art. Yeah. Uh, Tina, I don't know whether you're, you're on Zoom. And maybe you can give a bit of uh, an outline about this one of these new exciting projects that we'll be launching. Yeah, yeah in fact, um, uh, when it comes to away from the comfort zone, I think uh, we also try to reinvent who the audience is. So not uh, necessarily only those who come to view, but even the producers as an audience. We try to think of the audience as uh, people who are there to see and learn. So less of a passive audience and uh, trying to move on to a more active audience. In this case, with uh, away from the comfort zone, especially considering um, the circumstances, we wanted to see that uh, it would work both high, so in a hybrid way, um, something which could happen live, but also virtually. And uh, in this case, the audiences, as I said, are the producers, apart from those who will actually be seeing the fully-fledged project in the sense that uh, basically the producers will be exposed to uh, other kind of instruments and uh, also um, sounds which they probably hadn't really experienced before because obviously as a producer you kind of focus on, uh, on your own uh, prime instrument, but in this case, they will be, you know, seeing each other's work, collaborating, creating new material, um, which is something quite new for, uh, for circuits to have these kinds of uh, collaborations actually going into a fully fledged project. Um, uh, and perhaps something I'd like to add is even the importance of uh, thinking of your audience as something which can evolve. So always trying to have new people coming in, mingling, sharing ideas, um, even though Electronic Music Malta, for instance, is uh, based on electronic music. Um, like even myself, coming from the, the, art, the more visual art scene, um, uh, it's important to see the ways you can innovate to have a growth of audiences coming from different spheres. It's amazing to see what can come out of that, especially um, even considering that away from the comfort zone will also have a visual element to it, especially with regards to the places the productions will be recorded, documented, which is very important. Um, uh, and also, like I said, making sure that the audience is always engaged, as active as possible. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much it. I'd I could pass it back on to Edwin. Yes, basically also to, thanks very much Tina there. Tina is our secretary and obviously we are very keen on, on having uh, the new generation because now I'm, I'm a bit in the middle of the <laughs> road, I'd say. <laughs> so, so it's very healthy and Tina is, is, great for, is a great source of inspiration to all of us. So as such, this project, as well said by Tina, we aim also to upskill the artists, even the sound artists, and I'm pleased to say that we've secured thanks to a further grant because we continue mm -hmm. to also seek more financing and we got the Goethe mm -hmm. Foundation to help us out to get us uh, the services of a Grammy Award nominee, Tom Ammerman, who has uh, done stuff for movies such as The Fifth Element and Terminator 
and he's been um, nominated for the Grammy for the Kraftwerk 3D Catalog album. And we needed software to, to, so the artists can literally produce the same effects as done in Hollywood and in this um, sort of um, type of project that Tom was involved in. And we are going to provide this, this software and we're going to try to upskill these artists to produce th their productions using spatial sound and using um, um, binaural, binaural audio. Okay. which is a, a sphere which nowadays with all this, you know, like virtual reality experiences uh, could come in really, really handy. Edwin, I have to, to ask actually even a question to Mark here because we mentioned, even when Tina was, was explaining the project, we're mentioning about knowing your audiences. It's important because if you are, in this case, if you are tapping into um, new audiences, you're trying to increase your audiences in a way, you need to know what you already have and where you need to go. So how do you do that, particularly when then um, tapping into the digital um, sphere? Oh, definitely we've used the digital for that. Um, we, we ran a survey. So once every year we hold an annual general meeting for our, um, our um, VO, but we don't want to make it boring. We generally have jamming sessions and, <laughs> and gadgets there so, so, so as to engage as much members to mm -hmm. come as possible. Um, and we actually ran a survey. Uh -huh. And the survey resulted, uh, we, we did a lot of, let's say, I wouldn't say boring, but a lot of talks, you know, about this and that. But, all, all, but the result was that the people still wanted, even the producers wanted performances, wanted something legacy to stay there, a project that stays, you know, that can be documented, that can be filmed. Mm -hmm. So this, again, so, so the insight we got from actual digital. Mm -hmm. I, I think you already were very active on, on digital, as you were explaining before, so it kind of helped you can be in active, a way. But sometimes you can be one way, so it's very mm. important to be two ways, so you need to listen, to, to, to find the opportunity to, to send out surveys, to listen to what, what, yeah. what uh, people want, so even, not, not exactly members, but even the general public. Yeah. Mark. Uh, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but also, um, understanding is when you, uh, so from in a very different way from how we operate, because uh, digital is something that we are literally embarking upon now. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the ways, that even though with and without COVID, we'll keep on going, is by being very much. So, uh, you know, when working within the community, understanding and listening to what it is that they want. A simple example is like, um, what do you sell on a sandy beach in the, in the, in the middle of summer, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, granita or a coffee, it's as simple as that. You know, it's mm -hmm. little market research that you do when you work and engage with your communities. Mm -hmm. Marianne, what's your take on the subject? I mean, obviously you um, are helping and as Albert was mentioning in his introduction, possibly looking at the digital now as being one of the pillars of the strategy. So what's, um, what's your take? Um, it's just exciting listening to uh, both Mark and Edwin. Um, as Albert mentioned a while ago, um, uh, investment in cultural organizations um, was a tough nut to crack <laughs> um, uh, in December when we were selecting the organizations um, whom to fund, whom not to fund, etc. It wasn't easy. Um, but on days like this evening, I say, okay, good choice, good choice. We've <laughs> done, we've done the right decisions, you know. We've made the right decisions. Why? Um, <laughs> they're, they're glad that when yes, like, yes, it's a very I mean, <laughs> um, reassured smile. <laughs> obviously <laughs> with, with the sort of amount of funding, which is not a small amount, but it's never enough. Um, I have to say that we had to make our choices. And we had to introduce new organizations, and we're proud to say that Electronic Music Malta and Splendid Fundación Temizamit Community are um, uh, two of the new organizations. And um, obviously their vision reflects um, what our investment as Arts Council is looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so what they have explained, um, the way they're tackling their audiences is where we need to go. 
Um, thank goodness we keep very, in very much good contact and um, Mark and Edwin are particularly very active and they have been very active on all the platforms. You were asking um, the chairman a while ago what sort of um, aid, what sort of support we have given because it's, it goes beyond financial. Um, we also looked at training. There were Arts Reboot seminars, there were ACM labs, there were um, hangouts like these today, I mean, um, blogs, there was a lot of networking going on behind the scenes, not necessarily visible, mm -hmm. um, lots of meetings, questions being asked. So, yes, um, what's my take? What's my take? Digital is the way forward. Um, what I'm I haven't said this myself. Um, I've heard it on several international platforms, which I make sure to attend, um, because it's very important to keep abreast. Um, and also, you know, we're, we're very much up to date and in line with whether it's the questions we're asking, whether it's the confusions we have or the in uncertainties we have. So it's, it's very common. Um, uh, around the globe, um, starting from South Africa and, you know, into European, the European zone. Yes, they're asking these questions. Mm -hmm. And a statement, an uh, uh, important statement is, digital is the way to go. But then I have to speak um, about the other end of our audiences who tell you um, it can't replace theater going, it can't replace, you know, the... F the ferv, the, the 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 feeling of being in a concert, of course not. Um, but I think this age, as it is, is a time to actually experiment. Mm -hmm. And as one of you said, it's a fast forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this had to happen instead of happening in like a year and a half or two years' exactly. time. It's happening now, exactly. and we have to take you know the bull by its horns, and mm -hmm. we we're full of courage. Um, the culture and creative industries are full of courage. Um, and that's where uh, Mr. Marshall has referred that we're not afraid of, of, of this, this, this situation. We're facing it and facing it very strongly. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand. We need to understand. We need to ask questions. We need to keep exploring. We need to keep researching. We, we need to keep going with the sort of route, on the sort of route, mm -hmm. which will lead us eventually to answers and solutions and practices. I have more to say about this, which I would like to add maybe later on, but I give okay. space to my colleagues and um, so on. Okay. So, um, thank you. Edwin, did you notice any particular changes when uh, you increased your digital two-way communication? So were there differences an, in an trends? An important thing to say here is that it's never enough. <laughs> so whatever you do, so even though we're we sometimes as electronic music Malta we're like pausing before we're launching the proper campaign for for circuits and our members are saying when are you going to post something so we're always posting in our groups when is the campaign starting what are you doing and all, uh, and so 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 yes definitely when we started informally um, speaking about our project one of which um, I haven't spoken about but maybe later I can speak about um, when we we're trying to as Marion is rightly saying, we're trying to engage the, the, the community in a lot of aspects, both from a creative perspective and also, as Mark earlier mentioned, the entrepreneur element. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because although people might say, oh, you got funding, we'll say funding is important because it will help us to pay the artists a just fee, finally. We can, we can, we can market and we can literally push the artistic wor works to the forefront. Mm -hmm. But still, you have to think of ways to get partners, to get strategic partners, to continue to increase on the projects. And, and even, even the community itself is not aware sometimes of the funding of pro available in the Arts mm -hmm. Council Malta, which is another thing, which my, my area, the electronic music world, was, was everyone self-funding themselves out of their own pocket sometimes not being courageous enough mm -hmm. because it wouldn't make commercial sense mm -hmm. and not even thinking about making a good business proposal and mm -hmm. a good idea, which is always everything behind is mm -hmm. a good idea. 
I might interrupt here, we still encourage that, exactly, even though there exactly. is the financial support yeah, from exactly. Arts Council. We still encourage um, private partnerships, we still encourage other financing. It's very important. It's very important for the audience, the participants. The entrepreneurial element is, is you know, top mm -hmm. on the agenda. And, and speaking about this, this I think... The money is the money, the money is the Exactly, exactly. It's a very important point. And also, now, speaking of digital, we need to make sure that we make our digital work sustainable as well. So that's also, I don't know if you have, if you had the opportunity to think about that, explore that, but how do you, uh, yeah, how do you make it sustainable? So, um, this is, you know, this is just lexicon here, but that's why, for example, we t I, I try to get away from the word digital, mm. because, um, We've been living in a digital world for a very long time and we've consumed digital products or the content digitally for a very long time. And most of the times, as we've discovered here um, in these past few months, is that a lot of people are now expecting digital content to be given for free. Right. So one of the biggest. So when we tap on when we touch up when we t when, when we tap on entrepreneurship and uh, creativity and how we engage with the audience. And th that is why, to my mind, I say a new broadcast media. Um, for the simple fact that we, we have to go through an educational process, um, everybody, you know, yes. uh, the, who, who, who sells, who consumes, yes. who buys, who everything, to understand. And that is something that's going to take its time. It's, it's going to take its time. Exactly. And the quality of the work one produces then digitally exactly. is what then creates this, the, 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 um, that, that commercial aspect. Because at the end of the day, uh, which is great, and I, I, I think it's awesome that you know, our organization can benefit from, from these kind of uh, grants, funds, mm -hmm. and investments, right? At the end of the day, they are literally the, the, um, they're a tip of what is required. And what, what, what I'd like to add up on that, Mar, is the fact that more than the, the, what it does, it's also it, you, the, the, that financial contribution becomes also a belief in yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the fact that you have such, a, such, a, you know, such an organization as ACM that says, listen, we believe in what you try to do, what you try to achieve, at times that is even bigger. Than the actual than the actual fund. Please, I'm not. Yeah. You know, there are projects that require the big money, but this becomes something where you say, okay, I'm we're talking the right language here. We're doing the right thing, and so going back to that, it becomes very important that we have to be like I consider myself as an as a kind of animal that was an animal of land, and now we have to become creatures of the water. So it's my job to become amphibious. You know. <laughs> um, his organization has been there for a long time, right, in the digital world, but now it is our job. We have to learn, we have to invest in new practices. And this is where I believe we can do very well as organizations, producers, artists, is understand what we don't know is great because there's always somebody out there who knows more than you. Exactly. And, there's, and that's why collaboration is so, much, is so important, synergies are so important, that you engage and you work. And most of the times, there's going to be a 16-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. It is surely not some 44-year-old dad who's going to tell you <laughs> the way forward in, 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 in new media, that's for sure. Thank you, Mark. Um, I have to stop this um, discussion here but to move on to our third speaker, um, who is Robert van Hoeven from the North Netherlands Tunnel. As the in-house dramaturg for NNT, Robert is responsible for curating, planning, and guiding the productions which are developed within the theatre company. Um, he couldn't be here um, live on Zoom with us today, but he shared this video to present a really interesting concept which ties in with, with what we've been discussing. The Night Hotel, which is a very virtual platform where you can attend online performances online in the virtual presence of other, um, other audience members. Here's Robert. My name is uh, Robert van Heuve. I'm the chief dramaturg for Club Guy Roni NNT. And we're a combined theater and dance company in Groningen, in the north of uh, Holland. I'm uh, speaking to you on film because we're, unfortunately, we're not to able to be live here at your conference uh, because of the well-earned holiday. This also explains a somewhat amateuristic film I'm <laughs> clip I'm in right now because our marketing and technical team is uh, on a well-deserved uh, holiday break after a very turbulent corona uh, year. 
Um, you invited us to say something about our night hotel, um, something we're really proud of and we're glad to uh, tell you a little bit more about it. So when uh, we were working on our latest show before after, two days before our premiere, the Dutch government decided to close all theaters. Uh, and we could not have a premiere and we could not have a tour. Um, and because there was already an idea to use the internet more innovative to find a broader audience, we had the time, space and people while sitting at home to develop uh, a platform online. And this became the Night Hotel. We asked the designer, uh, Martijn Halley, who also makes our artwork, to develop a kind of space where we could meet the audience, the audience could meet us, and where we could also um, show performances, uh, most of them registrations of the things we already made. So Martijn created a hotel, a place where you can go to the theater hall to see uh, those registrations, um, bars where you can meet other people online, but also rooms, I think there's 25 of them, um, where there can that serve as a gallery of where you can where we can put artworks in. And in this first months of Corona, we asked our ensemble, we have an ensemble of dancers and actors, to make material for. And they all developed in their own room uh, a reflection on isolation uh, in times of Corona. Um, and they filled the rooms with film, audio, um, text fragments. Um, but they, we also created um, the possibility of live performances because this live experience was for us really important in this hotel. So we have the uh, opportunity to um, show the uh, performance we show in the in the, um, in the theater um, to follow it on Zoom, so the audience can online see Zoom and then see the performance, so they can see also the other people who see the performance. Um, but we also created, as I said, the possibility in the different rooms to make little live performances happening. So people enter the room, enter in Zoom, and then can see a little show our ensemble made or one of our ensemble members made in their own living room via Zoom. Um, so that was the first two weeks we created in this hotel, the Night Nights, in this freshly built hotel, where we um, showed our before after the show we couldn't perform and we showed all the little live performances our ensemble made. And it was more successful than we could hope. We reached more, more than 16,000 people uh, around the world for um, uh, internet. Uh, it's not big, 16,000 people. Most YouTubers have like a half a million, million followers. But uh, in comparison, um, it is 16 performances in the biggest theater we have in Holland. So um, actually it was quite successful. And uh, months after this, this was in May, we um, did registrations in the theater hotel. Um, we made contacts per programs uh, about the performances we made. We made live internet programs. Our artistic leader guy did every Friday, I called it Friday night, uh, every day he did a television, live television show in which he um, made context programs about the things we already made. And um, also we asked one of our young makers, our young theater directors, to make a performance especially for this um, Zoom hotel um, because all the registrations we made are were not made for an audience, actually. They were made for us or programmers to see what we're up to. Um, this is already there are people walking in here. Um, the registrations we made uh, make are not for an audience. They're made for uh, programmers for us. So we found... Um, found felt a little bit bad about the, the quality of this registration we put out there in the theater hotel. So we asked one of our young makers to make a performance, especially for the night hotel. And she created something, Helena Arbo, she's called, she called, uh, created something that is not theater, it's not registration, it's not film, it's something in between all those areas, which made us very happy because we consider ourselves an interdisciplinary um, company and we always search between theater, dance, and music. And now we can add uh, internet also in this time. 
Um, after summer, um, we will keep this platform. We will not be using it as we did uh, until now, but we'll, we will use it to keep creating context programs for the shows we make or perform, and we will make performances something that maybe can be online and offline at the same time. So we're still uh, experiencing what we can do with this uh, platform. Um, and it's um, it, it was also, um, so it was meant as an alternative performing space in times of Corona, but it's also really serves to relate to audiences that uh, experience a the threshold to go to the theater, theater and to audience that want to know more about us and our performances and speak to us live. We can do that uh, in the foyer after a performance, but we can also do that online. So we um, actually extend the dialogue we can have with our audience. And that's really important for us. Um, as I said, we're an interdisciplinary performance. We like to research uh, between all kinds of disciplines. And this also, this hotel was also a research for us into new ground. So the most interesting thing I found is that you can have a live feeling online. That you can be online and experience a performance together with audi on other audience members and have really a um, feeling of liveness. And that means for me and for us that the hotel enables us to extend the collective sphere of theater outside the 400 seats into the, in the theater. Um, so you have a collective space that is much bigger. We reached an international audience with the performances that we won't find in a regular performance. There were visitors from Hong Kong and Australia that will never be able to see us live or maybe if they come to Groningen, of course. But that said, the hotel is by no means an alternative for live theater. We keep making live theater and we see the platform as an extension. An extension that's really important for us. Um, we're really glad we had the opportunity and also the funding, I have to say, um, to um, explore this area. And we'll, we invested it in it and we will have um, revenue for this investment for the coming years. Um, I hope you'll be inspired with the Night Hotel and that you have a very nice conversation about uh, finding new audiences and using internet on new audiences. Um, internet is not, I think, uh, an alternative for live theater, but it can really be an addition to it. Have a nice day. Bye. Hi. Thank you, Robert, for that presentation. Um, it was a very interesting case study, which um, showed an example of how we can um, transfer our work um, or create work for digital um, platforms. So now on to our fourth speaker, who is Alexandra Patch from Blitz. Alexandra will be also sharing another case study, which um, Blitz is working on um, at the moment on, digital, on a digital platform. Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to join you this evening on this uh, discussion. Um, when Blitz was founded in 2013, one of the major overarching objectives of the, of the organization was to be very modular, um, to respond to contemporary existence, to be quite agile, um, to be able to, to respond to what's going on at the time and, and, and maintain sort of its, um, its relevance. And, and we have always been sort of driven by this agenda, so to speak, and Blitz has seen its programming going from being on a project by project basis to for a few years being uh, very residency uh, based to uh, in 2019 focusing on a year long um, exhibition program in the, in the gallery because of the, the increased influx of, of, of tourism and um, of not only any kind of tourism, but tourism actually looking for more culture, cultural um, activities. Um, of course, you know, <laughs> come 2020, um, that all, all changed. And um, what, what, what we did um, to respond to, to the, the, you know, crisis that everybody was dealing with, we, we, we kind of looked at Blitz as a, a two-part, um, organization, you know, a, a two-part model. One was the online and the other one was the off-site. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of very briefly cause touch, touch on, on both these aspects. So, so what we did um, 
when, of course, we were forced to close our doors, was we started the process of, of working on, on an online platform. And as I've, I often say, sort of the idea of Blitz having an, an online uh, space side by side, its physical space, was actually something that um, I, myself and the team had been thinking about for, for a number of years. It was just sort of never the, the priority, um, never the right time. Um, so we kind of looked at this as a bit of a, an opportunity to kind of use all that like thought process and, and, and research that we had done in the past to actually, you know, get the ball rolling and to, to, to kick off an, an online space. And we, we started that by launching what we called um, Open, which was the, the online equivalent to, to, to the galleries. Um, and through that, we sort of implemented um, two programs. One was our children's uh, engagement program, which was actually the, the first um, online program which we kicked off with, whereby through collaborations with contemporary artists, both Maltese and international, we sort of designed a number of um, activities that um, children with their families could could um, do in their own time and, and do in their own home, um, which was, you know, sort of very much a, an extension of, um, of our uh, children's engagement program that we do in the space. Um, following that, um, in June, I believe, yes, we started off, we kicked off in June, beginning of June, we um, launched our first online exhibition. Um, the title of the exhibition is The Eye of the Storm and our plan with this was, um, you know, like sort of I mentioned before, the, the, the online space was not a plan B but more like the start of something that should go on long term. So we, together with my team sort of, um, and, and, and my curator, the, the exhibition is curated by, by Sara Dolfi Agostini and we sort of devised this um, seven part exhibition so it's a seven chapter exhibition which will take us from june right up until december um, and at the start of every month a new work uh, will be available on this um, on this exhibition at the end of the 12 uh, sorry at the end of the seven months uh, when we launch the final work all the works will be collectively available again um, whereby sort of at that point, even someone who has followed the progress of this exhibition will be able to see sort of as a whole kind of how we devise the narrative to, to make every single work, every single chapter form part of a whole. Um, side by side with, with that, we also kicked off um, another aspect of Blitz, which is very important as part of the, the organization, and that is to, to initiate projects which are off-site, which are out of the building, which are collaborations with other institutions within or outside the, the cultural infrastructure. And we kicked off this project by inviting um, Italian artist uh, Nico Bacellari. Um, with this, he's got this artwork, which is a flag, um, and this flag uh, says, in dark times, we must dream with open eyes. And our objective with this was, um, considering what everybody, you know, what we are all going through, what we have been through, and this current state of, you know, opening up again, and sort of feeling that the agenda is always a little bit more um, business, commercial based, we, we chose to triangulate three aspects which we feel are being left behind, um, which is um, cultural, um, educational and human rights. So we've collaborated with, um, so this flag is currently hanging outside our building, outside Blitz. It is also hanging outside number 212 Old Bakery Street, which houses the organization's Food Bank Malta, African Media Association, uh, Blue Door English and, and Microfinance. And the next place which is going, it's going to be flying is outside um, St. Albert the Great College in Valletta. 
Besides that, there is an element of public participation. So what we are doing, what we are asking for, what we are encouraging is for the general public to actually purchase one of these flags for 40 euro, not a very big investment. And all the proceeds from sales um, of flags which come from Malta will all be donated to those um, organizations in, in um, uh, number 212, Old Bakery Street. So Food Bank, African Media, uh, Blue Door English and, and, and Microfinance. And we're encouraging people to, to purchase these flags, to fly them on their homes or, or on their buildings, any kind of building. And to to send these you know locations and images back to us, and we're hoping to create this you know collective participation whereby we are able to create an eventual map um, showing where um, people have have flown this flag and, and participated in in this project. Um, we of course you know like like everybody else we we taking everything you know. Day by day, week by week, month by month, uh, we, we don't know exactly how things will unfold, you know, when our doors will open again. Um, we are not a shop, we cannot just reopen the doors with, you know, the stock that we closed with before. Our exhibitions take months, um, sometimes years to, to plan. However, we are not, um, you know, just sitting back. We are engaging with uh, platforms, with, with alternative options. Um, and alternative possibilities, which we hope in the long term will not just be a, a stopgap, will not just be a, a plan B, but things which we have taken the opportunity to, to build together with what we have spent the past um, you know, seven, eight years building in, 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 the, physical, in the physical space. So that's, that's, that's us, that's, that's Blitz, that is how um, we have and we continue to, to respond to, to what is our reality. Thank you, Alexandra, for that presentation, which once again has um, introduced us to another project, which is on a, uh, present on a digital sphere. As um, Edwin was saying before, it was something which um, was sort of pre-COVID, but obviously now it's um, coming in quite useful and being developed further. On to our last speaker for today, um, Annabel Stivala, who is the director of Festivals Malta. Festivals Malta is an agency which produces um, eight festivals with more than 150 cultural events every year. What happened this year, Annabel? <laughs> hi, Elaine. <laughs> so, um, hi to you and our audience. Um, Actually, it's been very inspirational um, listening to all the speakers this evening um, and the panel you have um, uh, participating. Well, it's been quite a hectic four months, I must say. Um, uh, festivals Malta had everything prepared for the summer festivals, but obviously due to the sudden change in, in our lives, in everyone's lives practically, um, uh, we had to rethink, we had to reinvent ourselves and try to engage our audiences and also give um, opportunities to artists in different ways. So I would like to share with you today, um, uh, not just what we did, but also because um, uh, we also analyzed what, what we did in, in some way or another. And I would like to um, share those, um, the results we had. So, um, I think you are, I'm sharing my screen now, so I think we should be, no, something is wrong there. Okay. So, Elaine, can, I, can you see my screen there? Yes, we can see it, we can see okay. it, Annabel. So, um, festivals Malta during um, these four months between March and July, um, had these um, activities and festivals. So we started off with the 75th anniversary um, of World War II. We had Aita Wahda, we had Anafest, the Hybrid Festival, which was in fact a festival created during hybrid, during um, the pandemic, and the Morton and Jazz Festival and the Jazz Festival, which um, we just um, launched or rather finished them um, some, a few days ago practically. So during these events were all prepared. Um, uh, we had everything set by December last year, but then we had to come up with different um, ideas and create different ways to, um, to celebrate to celebrate them practically. 
So we started with the um, 75th um, anniversary of World War II. And here we had short documentaries. We had um, a, a, um, two productions, a just sweet and another production, which was in Maltese, Minas Raji in Fazola or Sardine. Um, and we had other events which were meant to be celebrated and um, performed in a tra traditional manner. However, due to the pandemic, we had to come up with different ways of doing this. So in terms of um, the jazz suite and the production, we had to um, film these and obviously film um, in, in, in very um, challenging ways because um, as everyone knows, um, people could not get together and artists could not even get, get together to rehearse or even film. So um, we got, um, uh, we engaged artists and, um, and, and the production managers to do this. Um, but um, this was the first, let's say, experience, and we learned a lot from this. Um, uh, but both productions were aired on TV, and um, we got the first reactions from our audiences. And this, I think, led us to come up with, come up with more ideas and do more for our audiences. And we had the bell ringing, which was a way of engaging people and the communities um, for this particular anniversary. Um, so we had bell, bell, bell ringing and the, the peeling of bells from practically um, most churches in Malta. And we had the short documentaries where, which were being aired on, on the national TV station and which engaged, engaged quite a number of audiences there as well. So then we came up with the idea of the hybrid festival. And this was an idea which was meant to be a, a version, which we were, we were meant to have a version of it in, during the Malta International Arts Festival. But we said, listen, we have to reach our audiences somehow. And we came up with this um, moving theater, let's say. Um, we couldn't get permits for this. Um, the health authorities wouldn't give us permits. Um, and this was um, a double-decker bus, which was transformed into a stage. And we were trying to reach audiences um, in, while they were in their homes. Um, eventually, we got the permit, and, um, but the original idea fizzled out somehow because this was meant to reach people in their own homes. And then we had to turn it around and go to people when, because the lockdown had practically ended in a way. The good thing about this is that um, we reach new audiences with this with this um, uh, mobile uh, mobile theater sort of mobile stage, and um, it gave us a lot of satisfaction when um, people came up to us um, saying that some people could had never been to to a theater or actually experienced a a um, a concert or anything like that. But not only it was also interesting to note how artists were reaching out to us and asking us if they could participate. So um, it was very interesting to see um, how that developed. And in fact, the hybrid festival has a second phase, hopefully not with the bus, but um, in Valletta, um, and that should be starting next Saturday. Then we had, we had Anna Fest, and I would like to share some insights with you here because um, it was quite interesting to note how um, Anna Fest, which generally has a particular audience, this time around reached, um, uh, we, we managed to reach um, quite a, a different audience with, with, them, with the online version. So as you are seeing here, we had, um, we started seven weeks before the festival. And here you can see um, the views and the engagement, the unique viewers and the reach. So each color is, um, uh, is depicting one of these. And as you can see in weeks in the festival week in week seven, um, how the um, all of these this viewership um, increased. So um, here we had um, 278k um, reach, 98k unique viewers, 106k in engagement, and 146 views. Um, then we had the Facebook post reach, and um, you can see the results here, um, and we were quite um, pleased with this, particularly with the organic reach, um, as this was, um, it, it was, it was um, substantial compared to the paid reach. 
here we have the page with the Facebook page views and we can see the peak um, during the festival week um, how, how this increased. And then we had the followers. Um, the start of the festival at the start we had 5,000 followers and then by the end of it we had we, we reached almost almost um, 7,000 there. Well. How, how does yes. this compare to the usual figures? Because I think it's, um, it, so, it's incredibly um, higher in, in this. Yes. Alexandra said that um, the, the pandemic um, sort of inspired us to, to, to do the online, um, the online bit. Um, and generally, we don't do this. Mm -hmm. So um, this, the pandemic gave us the chance to, to um, do the online part to to um, engage audiences through the online platform um, and it is ideal to have the traditional way of doing things and the online and the online platform um, having said this we have um, we have noticed a, a, a big increase particularly um, even how we reach audiences um, not, not just the local audiences but audiences internationally mm -hmm. um, this here we have um, an, an analysis of um, the minutes viewed um, and how many people um, followers um, viewed our our um, our online um, uh, our online um, posts. Mm -hmm. And here we had um, a, a um, an idea of the most engaged Facebook posts. We had the Macchetti, which um, the Macchetti we had, did really well, apparently. Yes, um, <laughs> with the with this five year old boy Leiden, um, <laughs> this was incredible. <laughs> the cooking sessions went really well. We had these traditional uh, the cooking sessions for, with traditional recipes, and we also had the music session. We we were quite, um, quite which was quite um, followed well as well. The website views, again, we had the audience overview by country. Here, this is quite interesting, where we had 68% in Malta, 12% in the US, Australia 5%, and other 15%. Um, that is quite um, interesting. And here we also have the top five pages. Festivals, Malta, um, Anafest, the cooking sessions, the hybrid landing page, and the Malta International Festival um, landing page. One must also um, notice the date, though, because as, um, as one festival ends and the other one starts, then the attention diverts from one festival to the other. This is um, something which is very, very interesting for us in terms of the of Anafes, because um, most of the um, here we have the demographics and we have the age, um, the age factor here. We were under the impression that Anafest was followed mostly by um, the older generation, but this gives us um, a, a different picture. Mm -hmm. So we can see um, a, 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 a good following with, with, the, with the younger audiences here. Yeah. It is also possibly linked to the platform in this case, right? Because okay. obviously okay. it changed, so you managed to reach a younger audience. To yes. And this, this is quite um, a, uh, um, a positive thing for us because mm -hmm. we know that through this platform we can reach an audience which was, was not generally, generally reached to the tra traditional way. Exactly. So it's a very and interesting case of audience development in this, in this as case. Well, as yeah. well. And also yeah. this gives us data um, to work on um, in the future too. Um, uh, website engagement, again, the approx approximate duration and the average viewing time, which was one minute, 30 seconds. Um, and this is the, the different devices, um, an idea of the different devices used if it was mobile, desktop or tablet. If we then go to the Malta International Arts Festival, we don't have such a deep um, understanding of things here, but we also, um, we have a general idea of the Facebook post reach here between the 8th of June and the 5th of July. Um, and here, unlike Anafes, the paid reach was, um, was more efficient than the organic reach. The Facebook um, views here, the followers, but what I'm interested in, in showing you here, we have the minutes as well. 
is the is this we had the artist collectives which was an initiative which um, the artistic director together with the artistic team um did for 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 this year in 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 the environment we had and we had um three um collectives we had the music collective the theater and the and the dance collectives um first of all with what what i would like to say is that um with the with all these initiatives, we actually we actually managed to engage some 400 artists, not just with these mm -hmm. videos, but with all um, the initi initiatives we, we took. In this video, Kamusa I would like if if I manage, I would like to share this a piece of this video with you. I'm not sure if I manage, but Let's hopefully actually we, we need to conclude quite soon, Annabelle. Okay. Um, but these, um, uh, with, through these uh, um, collectives, we've managed to engage a number of artists and, and also audiences um, because we, we presented arts in a different way and in a different manner, um, also giving them the, the, cool, the cool feel for, mm -hmm. um, uh, for most, for, you know, for, and reaching, reaching new audiences through this. Thank you, Annabelle. Um, I, 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 I just want to actually ask you a question. So moving forward now and based on these statistics, are you thinking of kind of using this methodology even um, for future festivals? And what are the investments which you are thinking of doing at this point in order to keep working on these lines if it's going to be this way? Yes. What we did immediately was we restructured because obviously we needed more people in the marketing team rather than the, um, the physical side of things. So the production people um, changed, the people on, on the production teams changed the role somewhat and are now helping more. Um, and we, we made the, the marketing and communications team much stronger. And that was the first, first um, initiative we took. And um, definitely we will, um, uh, we, we, we have to, um, we have to keep working um, on the online part of, of, the, of our festivals. And because in this way, we, we have results and um, we, we know that we can engage new audiences and reaching to a wider, um, a wider audience. And yes, definitely, um, we are looking into other um, opportunities and, um, and ways of reaching to new audiences, not just online, but also in other ways, because we know that the that this environment, the COVID environment, will be with us for for a while. Exactly. Thank you, Annabelle. This was a really interesting um, presentation of what happened in this case, and I think that you managed to um, to create to to take the opportunity in reality and to um, to explore other ways of presenting the festivals, which is which is great. Thanks for that. Thank you. Elaine. Thank you. Um, Marianne, it's time to almost time to conclude this very first round of yes. sessions of Hangouts, which were all interesting, all looked into sustainability in one way or another. Yes. So, yes. Um, um, in fact, um, from here, um, I congratulate my colleague Annabelle Stevala, who I think is an example is an example of uh, leadership when it comes to events and festivals, and I think. There again, it's the way forward. Um, it wasn't an easy four months. Um, that's very understood. And uh, yes, I think um, Festivals Malta gave us a pure and clear example of the way to go. So yes, as Arts Council Malta, both the private and public cultural organizations have actually um, uh, are looking forward to adapt to the situation. And um, we're not calling it only an adaptation now. It's, it's um, a new new opportunities new new ways of going uh, forward you know so we cannot miss we cannot miss the bus I can say very simply. Um, in fact, um, Arts Council um, is currently, we have kicked off now the evaluation and the consultation for the new strategy, um, which we're looking at between 21 and 25. And obviously the, the word digital will have to feature for quite a number of times um, uh, in all aspects and in all pillars, whether it's education, whether it's research, whether it's internationalization, whether it's um, communities, whether it's cultural rights, 
uh, accessibility, entrepreneurship, and the list can go on forever. Um, obviously, we have come to such conclusions and we will keep on going um, with these um, hangouts. In fact, I would like to take the opportunity, thank you, Elaine, and um, uh, also Steph, but thank you, Elaine, I remember ourselves, me and you, discussing we're going to leave this topic towards the end for as the last um, hangout. And you told me, yes, I think it's different. And I was like a bit resistant. But I, I, I thank you once again um, for the way you handled the hangouts. And uh, hopefully, this will not be the end. Not hopefully, surely, this will not be the end and will take up again from October. Um, so from October, um, we're going to take up with our ACM hangouts on a monthly basis, because I have to say these were a series specifically dedicated to investment and cultural organizations. Um, so yes, we look forward to keep networking. We look forward to keep exploring researching, discussing, understanding, and sharing, very importantly. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody, and all the participants as well, thank and you. viewers. Thank you very much, Marianne. And now, Seth will give us a quick roundup of what happened today. So thank you, Elaine, and thank you to all the speakers. I think um, today's session was a bit easier to round up, mainly because I think there's so much still left to be explored in, in this regard of the digital. Um, so I kind of summed it up between five main keywords. That's creativity, diversity, innovation, sustainability, and opportunity, which were five of the keywords which really continuously came up during today's session. Um, in terms of creativity, we mentioned the need to be modular and to maintain relevance in these changing times and in these digital shifts. Um, we spoke of innovative ways of outreach opportunities um, and uh, using digital and technological means to obviously do so. Um, we spoke of uh, the importance of using the right digital platforms with the right algorithms to push forward the right artistic projects, so kind of pairing up the available platforms with our projects. Um, in terms of diversity, we spoke of this both in terms of creators and receivers. Um, the opportunity to engage new audiences is quite a highlight in this regard, and uh, the opportunity that hybrid formats can bring was also highlighted in the sense of having mix, uh, a mix of live and virtual possibilities, both in spaces as well as in events, um, as being quite beneficial for audience development and reach. Um, and in this regard as well, obviously there is a new form, a new way of accessibility in reaching new audiences, possibly even internationally from our local context. In terms of innovation, the example of the Night Hotel was um, quite an interesting one as a particular um, reaction to the COVID um, uh, reality. We spoke a bit and linked this uh, in innovative kind of in innovation element to archiving and documentation, which we obviously also spoke about in one of the previous ACM Hangout sessions. But obviously, it is quite uh, interesting to see the links that exist with the digital world and how those can really be taken further when um, projects are well documented and, uh, and so on. Um, we spoke as well about the possibilities of moving to a more active audience, so having the possibilities of engaging audiences in new ways, even through digital means. Um, we spoke of audiences coming from different spheres, as well as the importance of going digital in a two-way kind of road. So um, obviously digital can become very one-sided, and we mentioned the importance to keep this an active conversation as possible between both creator and receiver, in this case the audience. Um, we spoke about the need to invest in new practices and collaborating with the experts in the digital world um, who know exactly what they're saying in this new media, which might often seem like a very new territory for those who have been um, working mostly in live contexts. Then, of course, in relation to this, we spoke about sustainability, um, the culture of free digital content, which we've experienced in the past months, and uh, we spoke of quality as being an enabler of sustainability when there is a digital shift and when we move into this digital world to uh, produce work and creative work. We spoke of new and changing roles within th teams and the need for flexibility in this regard. And finally, the need to see this as not necessarily an alternative, but more or less an opportunity to create new work and to reach new audiences. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Stephanie, for that. I would like to thank Arts Council Malta, Albert, Marianne Kauke, and all the team, our guests today, and speakers from Blitz, Fondazione Temesamid, and Electronic Music Malta. I would like to thank you for joining us and for following this session, as well as the previous four sessions. We'll see you back with the ACM Hangouts in October, and thank you very much for following, and good night. <laughs>